Ah, a home funeral. The introvert's choice. You know what a home funeral is by now. It's choosing to keep the body at home and mourn alongside your family without the pressure of the funeral home, which for some, not all, but some, can be an intimidating and unfamiliar environment. There's no need to roam when you can have a funeral at home. It also allows for unique tributes to the dearly departed. A Game of Thrones themed funeral complete with dad's beloved schnauzer dressed as a dragon. Go for it, beautiful dreamer. I've helped with home funerals. I had one for my cat. I want one for myself. But a question that comes up a lot is what if I am an organ donor who also wants a home funeral? Do those two things automatically cancel each other out? Don't throw out that doggy dragon costume just yet. It's very possible to be an organ donor and still have your funeral at home, but there are some things you should know. First thing you gotta know is that home funerals and organ donation are two things that never just happen. You never hear about a surprise home funeral. Your family or chosen family generally has to be on board. Bodies don't wake themselves. By the same token, you never hear about an organ donation that happens even when mom is crying and saying, don't desecrate my baby. They won't use your organs if your family is against it. Even if you have that little pink organ donation dot on your license, it's not happening. So lesson one, you have to talk to your family and get them on board for one or both of these plans. When you think organ donation, you're probably thinking about the charismatic mega organs like the lungs, the hearts, the kidneys, but most people can't donate those organs. That's why they're so desperately needed. When you die after a long illness, your lungs are not doing great. Charismatic mega organs are only viable in certain scenarios, like you die of a brain injury, but your body is otherwise healthy. If that kind of unexpected tragedy should happen, your family should know what your wishes are. Okay, let's pick someone you're going to do this post-organ donation home funeral for. Let's kill off your dad. Sorry, dad. If you want to donate your dad's vital organs, remember getting those organs requires surgery. The recovery teams will likely cut deep into his abdomen or crack open his chest to get them. The surgery will leave major wounds that aren't going to heal up after he's dead. Now, that leaves you with a couple of options. One option is saying, this has all been a bit much. I think we're done here. Let's just have the funeral director pick that up, clean him up, and show him to us at a private viewing at the funeral home. There's no shame in tapping out of the home funeral fantasy if the whole dying thing has been too much. But what if the dream was a home funeral? The death was tragic, and you need and deserve more time. Can you still take that body home? Heck yeah. From experience, you probably still want the help of a funeral director to prepare the body first. A dead body isn't going to bleed, but be aware that even after the incisions are sewn and cleaned up, there are still fluids that potentially seep out of those incision sites. The incisions can also make moving and cleaning the body at home more difficult. This is a tough one to navigate. If your family thinks the idea of a little blood or a little leaking is horrifying, a home funeral is probably not the right choice for you. You also wanna make sure that you're working with a sympathetic funeral director that understands why you wanna do this for your family. Here's an exact conversation that I've had with a funeral director more than once. So you think you can have a body with trauma at home? <laughs> Riddle me this, what happens when the family is rolling mom over and some blood or purge drips on the floor? What, what happens then? Uh, I don't know, nothing happens? They get a paper towel from the kitchen and go, dab, 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 and move on? It'll be fine. But what about someone who died at home? They're not eligible for major organ donation, but they still want to give back. There's a common practice of donating tissue, like skin or bone, or even your corneas. After a person dies, there's a window between six and 24 hours for this type of tissue recovery. You can call the donation organization and funeral home around the same time. Let's talk skin donation. You can request that the skin be taken from areas of his body that can be easily covered during a funeral. Bandage and gauze can be wrapped and wrapped around the area where the skin was removed. This will absorb fluids and hide the wound. Pro tip, saran wrap can even be wrapped around the wound with bandages placed over it so no colored fluids can be seen. 
seeping through. Just remember to remove that plastic wrap before a natural burial. If a bone is removed, a wooden dowel can be put in the bone's place so there's no floppy arm or leg. Cornea donation could actually be the least invasive recovery procedure. I've seen removals done many times, and it reminded me of my LASIK surgery. For skin and bones, your dad will need to make a little trip to the funeral home or recovery center, but in some places, a recovery team might even be able to come to your home to perform the corneal removal procedure. Now, have your corneas removed in the comfort of your own home. Once all the donation procedures are completed, a home funeral can proceed apace. When is the last time someone used the word apace in a YouTube video? Never. So donating your organs and then having a home funeral can be complicated. It takes a lot of planning and a lot of frank conversations. But if it's really what you and your loved ones want, it's definitely doable. The challenge can be part of the healing, coming together to make it happen. It takes a village to, to take a cornea. Thanks to Nora Menken, she's a longtime friend of mine and the executive director of the Co-op Funeral Home of People's Memorial. She also wrote a fantastic post about this on our Order of the Good Death blog. Link below. Question of the day, could you wipe up a little of mom's blood from the floor or would that freak you out? I'm genuinely interested in this question because for me, it would be no problem. Like a moment of, oof, sorry mom, but death is not perfect. But I've had conversations with other professionals where they act like a family could absolutely not handle it. So your honest thoughts, please. By the way, I am back from tour. Thank you to everyone who came to see me and waited so long. I'm sorry, I get very, I get chatty. I got a lot of really amazing art on this tour, but I think that my favorites are from Jordan. Jordan was a very young girl. We got Caitlin and we got Bentham's head. Bentham's head. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Bantham's head.